Welcome. I'm your host, Alex Avila, founder of College Career and Beyond, also known as CAB, where our listeners go on a journey and hear stories about academic, economic, political, social struggles, and or advancements in today's world. Stay tuned. Plugged with CAB. All right. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Alex Avila, and this is College, Career, and Beyond. And I'm doing this on my lunch break. I just put my little man to sleep. I have a whole schedule, and I felt like I needed a mental break from Zooming since 7 o'clock this morning. And now my lunch is around uh, 2 something, so it's kind of crazy. But anyway, this is College, Career, and Beyond, and I want to talk about a few things. I want to talk about COVID. I want to talk about back to school and then what to expect. Uh, for those who don't know, um, I caught COVID in December and uh, I caught it in Christmas, the Christmas week. And I was, it took me about two and a half months to fully recover. And it was a it was a doozy. I'm not even going to lie to you. I, I caught it. And, and if I was asymptomatic, I would not be talking this way. It is serious. So, folks, if you have to get the vaccine, get the vaccine. Um, and I'll talk more about the vaccine in a second. But, yeah, when I caught it and it was I had everything, you name it, uh, runny nose, the fatigue, the fevers, body aches, chills, and it was it was it was like forever. It just kept going forever. It was like this. I'm like, when is this gonna end? And when I finally came to, um, I mean, thank God. I mean, I could barely walk. I almost fell a few times actually, out right 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 outside my house. Um, just trying to walk a few blocks, and uh, it took a while to get back on. You know, some baby steps. And just kind of just get back my energy, get an appetite. It was a process. And then I got to give a shout out to the community that came out to show me love. Because the one thing that happens with COVID, I know there's some folks who are uncomfortable sharing that information saying, you know, I'm not going to tell anybody. I advise you, you need to tell people if you have it, because the danger of other people who have a compromised immune system is extreme. So you don't want to put somebody else in danger because of your ego. And so when I caught it, I let everybody know, you know, my aunts, cousins, anybody that I came in contact with, whether I knew you or didn't know you, shook your hand, whatever. You knew I, you know, my neighborhood, my neighbors, look, I got COVID, keep your distance. And we're trying to figure this out. I'm in quarantine 14 days. And when they say quarantine 14 days, what that means is that for 14 days, you have to quarantine yourself. So that way you don't infect somebody else. Doesn't mean you're going to get perfectly be perfectly just healthy and just bounce on your feet. That's not what's going to happen. It, what it means is just for 14 days, they study that if you just quarantine for 14 days, after that, you won't be able to infect somebody else. So if you're scared of getting COVID, that's why they tell folks to do the quarantine, right? And just isolate yourself. I was blessed and, and I had an opportunity in where I live at my house to isolate myself on a section of the house. And the family, you know, did not have to interact with me at all. My wife checked on me on a daily basis, at least two, three times a day. And shout out to the people that gave me care packages and came through show love. I mean, much love and respect to y'all. So anyway, I just wanted to just put that out there. And again, it wiped me out. I'm not, I'm not even going to hold you. It wiped me out. Um, now, why am we having this conversation is because everything is opening up. I'm noticing people, you know, taking their mask off and just... Parties are just increasing. Outings are increasing. While I was taking my son to the park, there'd be a few people at the park. Now we go to the park. A bunch of folks are at the park. You know, it's like, you know, it's like people are just anxious to get back to business. It has to do with that vaccine. And what that means is there's an attitude that comes with the vaccine. And um, one of the things that I've learned um, from catching COVID, you know, watching uh, um reports from doctors from Italy, China, and reading research and understanding how COVID works. Um, uh, this COVID thing is just fascinating. The vaccine has been in production for five to six years. So people think they just came up with it last year. I wouldn't take it if that was the case. I wouldn't even tell my wife to take it if that was the case. But no, the production of this vaccine has been in place for five to six years. So Moderna and Pfizer, Johnson, they've been working on this for several years. So COVID is not new. COVID has been around for years, decades, decades and decades. And so uh, the vaccine was created to deal with not just the COVID-19, but other COVID um, similarities. And so the blessing is that, you know, the vaccine, you know, can tackle whether it's COVID-20, whatever number comes in, where variation comes in, that there's a way to tackle those uh um, 
you know, viruses. And so, yeah, COVID is not new. In fact, they were working on COVID um, vaccinations during the Obama administration. Crazy, right? So anyway, just to put that out there, um, we never had a pandemic. We never had a shutdown like this in the history of the planet. So there's just been a lot of confusion, uh, mismanagement of information. People don't know what, where do I, where do I go? Uh, what do I do? What does it mean to get the vaccine? Is it a, so the vaccine's a protein and a protein that has similarities to the coronavirus, the, you know, corona, the crown of the virus. And then it just kind of activates your body's antibodies. And so whether you have COVID and recover from COVID fully, because that's important, right? To make sure you recover fully from COVID. Because some people may say they caught COVID twice, but what it is is you never fully recover from the first instance uh, because you're either working or you're moving and you never stop and the body never got to heal. And so, yes, um, it feels like you caught it twice, but what it is is just a relapse. And um, that could be severe. I remember my doctor telling me, yeah, you got to make sure you fully recover because if you um, get the, you know, that if it resurfaces again, you will be in a hospital and you more likely be on a ventilator because of what happened to you the first time. And she was right, because the way it almost laid me out the first time, chances are you run into the hospital and who knows what might happen. Right. And I'm blessed again that that wasn't the outcome that I had opportunity to work from home. Actually, I took a break. So for whatever those and my job was supportive, they was like, you know what, just take time to heal, recover. And when you're ready to bounce back, we got you. So I was blessed to have that opportunity. Um, but as far as this vaccine, there's an attitude and there's a culture that's happening. And I'm noticing it like people are like, oh, I got the shot. Psh, I don't have to worry about when it's mad six feet, you know. So what I want to say is this is another thing that I got cleared by my doctors and specialists was like, yeah, you're good to go. You know, um, and the cool thing is the doctor I had, she's been treating COVID patients since last year, 2019. So where people was trying to figure out what the thing was, at least there's a few doctors who picked up that this is COVID because they were reading the reports nationally and just checking in and see what's going on. And so from her experience and patients and dealing with that, um, uh, even as of two months ago, 97 percent of her patients were COVID patients. Um, you know, she shared some expertise and she gave some great tips and hydration is going to be key. Um, keeping a healthy diet, mobility, just moving around, you know. So, you know, when I was sick, you know, she just hooked me up. But anyway, when I asked her about should I get the vaccine, her key word was like, look, the vaccine is just going to create the antibodies that your body's going to have so it can fight the virus. If you already recover fully from the virus, I haven't seen anybody come back who is sick from the virus. And, and studies are showing that it's very rare. Is it possible? It's very rare for somebody to come back uh, from the virus. Now, if you haven't fully recovered, then chances are, yeah, you have a high percentage of, you know, being sick and hospitalized. But if you fully recovered, you already got the antibodies. And she educated me about the antibodies being in your body for about two to three months. It depends on your immune system and what your body, what you got going on. And the other thing I learned that, you know, once the antibodies kind of dissipate or disappear, um, you have a thing called B cells. B cells are what create the antibodies, right? So these B cells are, are producers of the antibodies to fight COVID. Now, every so often they may forget how to create the antibody. So that's why we take vaccines or get boosters. So then your B cells remember how to create uh, the antibody or the weapon to fight whatever viruses you're dealing with. In this case, we're talking about COVID. And so just quick kind of heuristic, uh, just, you know, cause I'm going to keep this under 15 minutes and that's my goal. But just a quick, you know, if you're trying to figure out what that is, that's what that is. So if you create the B cells, um, if your B cells create the antibody for a particular virus, chances are you hope that they remember how to fight that in the future. Hence in point, you know, you get the chicken pox shot once in your life because guess what? That B cell is like, all right, if you had chicken pox, they say that the chances of you catching it again is almost extremely rare uh, because your body is a virus. Again, chicken pox, chicken pox, right? Measles, you know, all these things are, are viruses. And so your B cells can remember how to deal with that. And they create the antibodies to fight that in the future. Okay. So again, this is attitude. People are get, people are partying. I was in meetings, Zoom meetings, and people were like, I can't wait, man. I just, and so they're, they're already partying. Let me just stop. They're already. Places are already fully open. Texas, uh, Florida, Atlanta, Vegas. I'm telling you right now, like they just just been up and running and going ham on this thing. So it's going to be we're going to be opening up. And what's going to happen is that this vaccine, once 100 
million vaccine hits the scene and close to 200, that's going to be a thing where, you know what, we're not even going to talk about COVID anymore. Uh, by this time next year, we're going to be talking about something totally different. And and I promise you, it's going to be like, OK, that was just a thing and we're moving on to the next. Uh, and that's going to be something to watch. Trust me. Once we fully open up people because you can see the attitude in other places that are already open. So what COVID what? Who knows? So any next, you know, they're already on the next thing. And so just watching those cities and traveling to those some of the cities because we have me and my wife. It's just fascinating to see how people just just out in the open and doing their thizzle. So we're going to act like this never happened or this is just one of those asterisks in, in history. So just be aware that um, we're going to go back to school. And I say that is because if you're talking about a virus spreader, anybody who's a teacher or worked in a school district, you know, once the schools open up, viruses spread like wildfire. I remember teaching in middle school, high school. I mean, I was getting sick every two weeks, sometimes every month because the germs that come in. So my doctor was like, you know how to stop that? Just clean your hands, sanitize room, clean your hands. You know, you don't have to just, just clean, you know, just wipe clean antibacteria. Just do that. And my hands were ashy Larry. Like I had the ashiest hands on the planet because why? I, I followed my doctor's advice and you know what? I didn't get sick. And so what's going to happen is going to be a lifestyle, some protocols that take place. But once the schools open up, let me tell you, your kids probably haven't been sick all year. You probably haven't been sick all year. I wasn't sick all year. The first time I got sick, I got the monster. I got the COVID, right? But you're going to witness and you're going to see that when your kids go back to school, they're going to catch every bug known to man, right? They just, they're going to get sick like crazy. The, the pharmacy is going to be crowded on a regular. And you're going to, and, and you probably witnessed this. Your kids have not been sick. You haven't been really sick like that. When your kids go back to school, they're going to, and promise you this, they're going to come across COVID-19. And what I'm saying is, if your kids go back to school, one of the advice I'm saying is make sure that you have any older people in your family, grandparents or people, cousins, older folks to take the vaccine because you don't want to put them in danger. And that's just my advice. You don't want to put your older people around you in danger. I can see why the teachers are fighting um, for us to go back to school in the classroom because they know there has to be some type of protocol, some type of uh, uh, a roadmap to how to do this because a lot of teachers are older. You know, a lot of your tenure faculty members, the tenure teachers are older teachers and God forbid, you know, once we fully open, what will happen to them, right? We don't want to put them in harm's way, right? Not our educators. So I just want to highlight and put that in there that the reason why there's a, also a big delay because the government is just trying to just open it up and people are suing and, and going after government officials to hurry up and open up we have anti-vaccinators there's a lot of movement and a lot of things happening up but we're going to open up for sure and they already have vaccines coming out for it, people 16 and up so teenagers are going to be probably required to take vaccines but there is available for them now and they're going to have it for toddlers and infants this year or next year and that's the crazy part about it right well do you want your child to get the vaccine a toddler you know that's the question that you have to deal with and answer but as far as school this thing is opening up. And what I'm saying is you need to have a protocol. If you have people in your family that you love, I'm recommending you take the vaccine. A thousand percent. I'm recommending you get the shot because you can save a life in your family, you know, um, and encourage them to get the vaccine. If you don't want to get the vaccine, at least let them get the vaccine find avenues and, and CVS is already opened up with the vaccine. Walmart are going to have it all, you know, it's going to be in schools. It's going to be in churches. A lot of logistics is being worked out right now. So everything is opening up. I remember telling folks and they were laughing at me. Oh, it's not good. I said, no, things are going to open it up because I sit in these meetings, you know, I'm getting educated with the process, what the rollout looks like. Everything is going to open up. I'll be back in the classroom for sure next year, probably by the winter, if not late spring. And so, me saying that is what I'm already preparing how I'm going to deal with that and, and what my protocol is going to be. So I'm going to advise everybody here. If you have a loved one that you care about and then you have older people around you, make sure they get the shot. Make sure they get vaccinated uh, because you don't want to expose them to something and you don't want to be the reason now that, that that something horrible happens to them. So either let them get the shot, you get the shot, but even you get the shot doesn't protect them. You know, so I would encourage you to tell them to take the shot. You know, um, I encourage you to say, Hey, you know what? I love you. 
you should get the shot because you're going to be around my you're going to be around your grandkids. You might be around us, you know, birthday parties, you name it, graduations, all this stuff, proms that people have been missing and, and, and been wanted to be around sports. Everything is open up. So think about what the parameters about that is going to look like, you know, so encourage those people to get the vaccine. Because at the, there's other things that we have to worry about other than vaccine, like employment. How are we going to get this economy back up? Um, shoot, beyond the economy, like, you know, people are losing their homes. Like, you know, uh, kids have fallen behind. How many students have dropped out of school? How many kids have fallen behind in classrooms? There's a whole list of things that we have to address. And on top of that, a lot of the social ills that are happening, mental illness, and then these violence around against uh, people of color. Uh, I can go on and on. And then what's happening to these countries? What's, what's going on with the world? Like when we come back, there's a lot of things we have to process. Policies that have been put in place that we haven't really been paying attention to. What those policies are going to do to us? How are they going to change the way we live? How are they going to change the way we work? So these are things to think about um, because after after this phase. It's, we get pandemics every year. So let's just put that out there. When I say pandemics every year, I'm talking about Ebola, the swine flu. And guess what? Those things don't go anywhere. They get controlled and they get dealt with appropriately, depending who's the administrator and what the team is dealing with those kind of things. So, and again, I just want to put that thing out there that we're going to be opening up and folks are just going to want to be hugging and, and doing all kind of stuff and meeting, kicking and kicking it with folks. Tell those people to get the vaccine. I'm just saying. Go get the vaccine. Don't even play with it because you know what? It's one less thing you have to worry about. Yes. Have there been people who died from um, um, the vaccine? Yes. 23 people. You saw that I posted it on my Facebook and my social media. 23 people died. Um, I, I believe is in Ireland or someplace like that. And what it was, was those people's immune system was already extremely compromised. So giving them the shot was just too much. Their body can deal with it. And yes, they died and they were extremely older. And um, they're already almost in hospice. So, uh, yeah, this is true. This has happened. But the chances of people dying from the vaccine is very, very, very rare. Just like the chances of people getting it twice is very, 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 very rare. And these are factual. These things you can research on YouTube, Google, whatever your platform is. Um, the actual person who actually caught COVID twice. And my next podcast, I'll talk about that because I think we should do a whole uh, section on that. It's fascinating. There's only one person that I know in one of the articles I read that officially was that caught COVID twice because there's a special test you have to give that person to see if they caught the COVID twice. And it has, is there a different variation to that second one? So that is something we should be talking because that was fascinating to learn that there has been at least one person confirmed of catching it twice. And I'm going to share um, articles and links to that probably in this video um, if people are going to watch the video. But if you're going to listen to the podcast, I also put the link in the podcast as well. So but anyway, this is College Career and You're Beyond. I'm your host, Alex Avila, and I'm just doing this on my lunch break. And I'm keeping this, I said, under 15 minutes. All right, under 20 minutes because my little guy's about to wake up and I got to finish this uh, smoothie and then I got to get back to work. Uh, shout out to all the supporters and everybody. Um, yeah, I'm out. Thank you for listening to CAB. College Career and Beyond. We hope you enjoyed this episode. You can find us on whatever provider podcast you listen to. Spotify, iTunes, iHeartRadio, and more. Continue listening to CAB, College Career and Beyond. Where we keep you ahead of the game and not behind the game.